I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you and welcome to the January 22nd uh, meeting of, of the Select Board. Um, we have a fairly brief agenda tonight, although we do have a first uh, good look at uh, of some overall budget numbers. Um, so with that, um, we will proceed with the minutes of the January 7, 2018 meeting. They're in your packets. Mm -hmm. Anybody? I move that we approve the minutes of January 7, 2019 as submitted. I second that. It's been moved and seconded to approve the minutes uh, as presented in the packet uh, for January 7, 2019. Is there any discussion on the motion? Nice lead on again. All in favor. Thank you. And a positive comment of nicely done. Um, the warrants are 30 and 31. Do you have those here? Looks like they are right here. Yes. And I'm going to take one off the top. I can explain to them once everybody has a copy. That'd be great. You go Thank down. You. Oh, excuse me. Yeah. Oh, Chris. There, and you have a copy already? I do not have a copy. Okay. Uh, there you oh, go, sir. Here we go. Good job. <laughs> Almost there. Almost Sorry there. about that. Here Air mail. Go. Alrighty. Oh, sure. So okay. Light. We're talking about 30 and 31? Yep. Okay. So uh, the uh, 30 is the regular warrant state fees, uh, mostly on that. Um, and um, if you take a look with me on uh, the breakdown, this is 30. You can see um, some pretty normal things, but some higher things. The assessor uh, fee came through. Um, salt things of that nature, uh, animal control services, nothing uh, that I thought uh, looked unusual or stood out to me uh, in any particular way. Um, I'd be willing to entertain questions. Uh, the, uh, yes. Okay. Cool. The, the KV Humane Society, I assume that's just part of animal control? Yes, that's mm -hmm. right. Yep, that's exactly yeah. right. Yep. Um, Part of that, I have no questions. Okay, uh, pretty yeah. I, this one was pretty easy. Didn't nothing that raised uh, any eyebrows for me either. Um, and so that was uh, thirty, um, and uh, that is in the amount. Um, I have a question. I'm sorry, that was thirty. Do you, about thirty or thirty-one? Um, thirty. Okay, go Pine for Tree it. Veterinary Hospital. And at Ravens Clinic. Yeah. Okay. And so we pay for it, the, the every, shot the itself. People pay, the people pay for the shot. So it's a pass through. It's a pass through. It's a, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Excellent. All right. Uh, and uh, 31 was the payroll. Um, and uh, I don't think. That's it in terms of the breakdown. So uh, 30 and 31 for, uh, uh, let's do them separately. Uh, Bruce, is that how you like to do it, 30 um, and 31? No, you can make it all one motion, but what okay. you can do is yeah. um, when you move it, um, just give those four numbers in the total. You got it. Okay, so uh, therefore I move uh, to accept uh, warrants 30 uh, and 31 uh, in the, uh, yes. 30 uh, in the amount of 30, is that right? 37,561.64? Yes, yep. inclusive okay. of the two loans. And that, yeah. okay, and those are the two supplements. Do we include yep. those as well as extra? Or those, those, those are, those are included, already included. included yep. Exactly right. Um, and uh, warrant 31 for 14,748. For the grand sum of 52,262. 52, 12 cents. And I'll Lots second of twos. That. Thank you. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to approve warrants 30 and 31 in the amount of $52,262.12. Um, we have a motion on the floor and it's been seconded. Is there any further discussion on the warrants? All in favor? Thank you. That's a little one. Oh, yeah. No school. A, 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 a,
We'll yep. move on Great. to select board communications. Do any members of the select board wish to address the rest of the board, the public at large? Of course. Anybody? I will. Of course I do. Sure. Uh, the, uh, just want to tell folks that uh, we've had a good response so far to folks signing up for the Heritage Days Committee. Um, in addition to Ms. Sammons, we have some other folks who are uh, uh, interested in joining us. Uh, again, if you're interested, uh, all of you out there, wherever you may be watching um, or listening, uh, please go to our Facebook page, uh, the Town of Reedfield Facebook page, and you can uh, find the online form there, or you can stop by the town office and sign up for a volunteer form. Um, I uh, there's going to be something coming out in the messenger also so uh, if you're curious if you have any questions please uh, contact me Dennis Price uh, it's dprice at reedfieldmain.org uh, and uh, ask about it we we're, our meetings are painless it's fun and there could be refreshments uh, in that as well so uh, we just wanted to let everybody know so thank you very much yeah, so Dennis um, you're looking for people who serve on the committee as well as individuals who just might volunteer absolutely so absolutely either way so yeah. you can can you can commit to the committee or you can commit yeah. to volunteer exactly right if you want to be there day, day of we'll certainly need folks there yep. um, if you're interested in helping us do some planning and things like that we plan on working Again, this year with some of, oh, I'm sorry, with some of the different organizations who also do things, the Trails Committee, uh, the folks at the, uh, 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 the Masons, uh, mm -hmm. there above the uh, uh, post office, post office uh, and uh, other organizations uh, throughout town who help this make uh, the Reedfield Union Meeting House, the library. Um, so we're trying to make sure that everybody is, is, is there. One point of communication so that, that, you know, people, it's not individual villages, it's everybody working together together to have a great day great I was just gonna say we want those people that want to participate that day and have their own activity they want to get involved with the meeting so that we know where they're at and when we advertise they're in the advertisement yeah we're, we, we, we noticed that with the Reedfield Festival it was so much better if no matter what organization was happening something at least we could include it we could we could advertise as one sort of centralized place rather than than a thing here and a thing here and a thing here so again we we, we just feel like we work better when, when we're all working together rather than individual villages and they're you know everybody's own little property everybody gets so worried about that but really it's 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 all for the day and it's all for for a celebration so uh, we're excited we're we're gonna do the kickball tournament again and maybe even some cornhole down by the beach so we'll see we'll see other members of the board please all set okay all right. and I'm set too all right, all thank, right. you. thank you uh, staff reports all right, we um, are in an off um, cycle meeting, so I don't have a written report, but I will give a quick update um, that we are um, uh, wrapping up the town clerk hiring process. Um, I want to thank um, uh, Bruce and um, Teresa, uh, as well as Mark Robinson from Fayette for their help in um, uh, working with the interview committee, uh, on the interview committee, and um, helping to, to successfully interview four applicants. Uh, so we're um, narrowing it down from there, and uh, I hope to be able to make a final decision this week uh, and, get, um, and get that moving along. So um, that is good news for us, um, and uh, happy to see it uh, coming, coming down to the, to the end of it. Um, also, uh, we are through the worst, I think, of our IT, I wish I had some wood to knock on, mm. of our IT issues, um, but uh, uh, making progress. Uh, we have email set up and fairly stable, I think, over the past week. Uh, we have a few more um, transitions to make with staff computers, but uh, the, the server migration is pretty much done uh, with a few, few little cleanup pieces there. But um, uh, that's finishing up. Uh, we are looking at um, some building improvements here. Our alarm system in uh, Giles Hall is um, uh, Giles Hall. It's not, there's no S, right? Um, uh, is. Uh, <laughs> 20, 20, 20 plus years old, uh, so we will be replacing that, uh, and it will have some um, some nice uh, features that we didn't have previously. Um, but we'll definitely make sure that we're able to maintain the security of the building for uh, fire and burglary um, for years to come. So happy to see that change as well. Um, Winter storm uh, was a heavy one, but uh, the staff performed well, as did our equipment, uh, and uh, couldn't be happier with the results. Come Tuesday morning, everybody's back in business, and uh, the place was, was good to go. So Good. 
Really happy to see Excellent. that. So our purchase is, is a good purchase. Absolutely. Uh, it continues. To, I mean, the, I looked, you know, Tuesday morning, uh, and the level of service we had, if we had the old machine, we would have been s broken down halfway through with, with DOT sidewalk, uh, you know, uh, mm -hmm. filling in the sidewalk. But because we were able to do it during the storm multiple times, we were able to keep on top of it and provide the level of service that we should be and that I think residents expect. So we want to see that continue. Yeah, great. I assume. I saw it working on Monday, too. Anna will yep. be out again tomorrow morning since they came by with the wing and filled the sidewalk up again this afternoon. Yes, she will. Yes, she will. <laughs> she had the day off for her birthday. So, uh, so yeah, that's I, I'm, I'm, I already know this is true, but I just want to get it stated. So there's a post um, use, heavy use inspection of the vehicle and there's a maintenance schedule in place for it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and we actually just passed the 40-hour uh, the um, uh, 40 hour um, mark and so we'll be um, because it's a new piece of equipment the uh, uh, dealer will be coming picking it up servicing it and bringing it back to us okay. so, yeah um, so the only anything else Eric uh, no that's it. I just no I, I just want, I wanted yeah. to comment on the on the whole email thing because uh, I missed email for a couple of weeks mm -hmm. and um, and so did other folks but somebody very nicely provided me PDFs of all the missed emails most of them were just notices and so on and so forth. But I did appreciate that and uh, went through that. So who, whatever, whoever the staff was that did that, I certainly appreciate it. Mm -hmm. It was helpful. Um, so on to boards and committees. Um, the, we have the age-friendly uh, minutes of September 6th, the age-friendly uh, committee minutes of October 10th, in the library board minutes of December 10th that are in your packets and therefore entered into the record for the town of Reedfield. Public communications. We don't have public um, sitting here tonight, probably because it's a short meeting after a storm, um, but we always do have public communication available and um, uh, do come on down sometime. Mm -hmm. We're on to new business and we'll start by considering the commercial hauler applications for 2019, and Eric, the floor is yours on that. All right, thank you. I'll start by running quickly through uh, and identifying uh, online. We have an addendum uh, for this packet, and I also have copies provided here to the select board uh, for information that's come in since Friday when we put this packet together. So uh, quickly, uh, I will uh, just note that Archie's Incorporated is a, a complete uh, application that came in um, late Friday, but I didn't really get around to, to printing it off until today. Um, so that one is new and not included in the packet. Uh, they do have a copy of a check included here. However, I have not yet received it, so um, I won't go so far as to say that that one is, uh, is in, but um, that's the one piece missing from that application. Uh, Galoosh is the next um, uh, hauler that uh, I wanted to highlight. Uh, he had completed a, uh, an application prior, but had not paid. He did come in and pay today, uh, and so he is complete with that uh, confirmation of payment. Uh, James Diamond, another one that came in today, and uh, this was a, a complete application submitted, uh, including the um, payment and uh, insurance and recycling plan that's required. And the last uh, is Triana Waste, and uh, they had not confirmed um, or had not submitted payment, uh, but did um, did today as well. That came in, and we were able to to process that. So um, I'll back up and say is with the original six um, or uh, original packet, we now have six applications, uh, and all except for Archie's. Uh, is complete and Archie's is only incomplete because of that um, uh, not receiving the check in the mail yet. Uh, one big difference this year that uh, we didn't have last year is I required uh, a little bit more information about commercial haulers, um, including the um, type and quantity and location and volume uh, of um, receptacles that, that might be uh, on site for a commercial entity, so anybody that's not residential, which would include the schools. Mm -hmm. um, because one of the issues that we've been running into is over the past um, few years, I think the, the volume of waste from commercial haulers has increased, um, anecdotally, 
Uh, but uh, one thing we're trying to do now is get better data on that, and we may very likely uh, begin assessing a fee for um, for dumpsters uh, of various sizes to help offset some of those costs uh, based on the frequency with which they're hauled and the size. Uh, and one of the um, uh, larger and biggest issues we had last summer was with a summer camp. Uh, they would come and unload a packer truck and it would essentially fill two-thirds of, of the container, uh, which was a, a problem for us and we ended up having to put material into the demo can, send it off uncompacted, so there are costs associated with that. I want to get a better understanding of what these commercial waste streams are because they are so impactful, not just dollar-wise, uh, but operationally. Mm -hmm. um, and another big one that, that um, has been much more steady but has you know, a sizable impact, I'm talking about 40 to 50 yards per week, is uh, the RSU, um, including, it's not part of the RSU, but Fayette School as well. So uh, when you add all those educational entities up, uh, we have a sizable impact, um, and that is something that we definitely need to look at because I see an equity issue there in that um, uh, we uh, pay into the RSU for our students, uh, but it's prorated, uh, and the waste stream that they are delivering is generated by all the towns in the RSU, and right now it's Fayette, Wayne, and Reedfield that are paying for that. So there's an equity issue there, but again, it's also a huge amount of waste, uh, and I think we need to be billing for that somehow. Um, so we're you're not going to saying, get... yeah, oh, you're right. So yeah. for, the, for the schools that are located in here, which would be the middle school and the high school, there would be obviously Manchester students and um, uh, Mount Vernon students contributing to that waste. Exactly, stream. yeah. So in order to make it balance what or we should be doing yeah. is, is billing them and then they can bill us back if they want to but we'll be paying a lower share <coughs> in well, theory. And, and Fayette shouldn't yeah. be paying any of it because they're not in the RSU. Exactly. Right, yeah. They're being commercially hauled by. Right I understand but they shouldn't. So there's well, an impact I, that we have we should look at. Right. Yeah. But yeah. it brings up a bigger question I think of what all commercial hauling all commercial establishments should be and I think we have to be very careful with that because all of your commercial establishments all pay property taxes. Yep. They, do they well. don't they don't not burden the schools. They're not commercial, they're educational. Yeah, right. mm -hmm. Um and they don't bur the commercial ones don't burden the town in terms of educational costs, which res which residence does. So I think we have to be careful when we're trying to balance things of what we're balancing. Yeah. Yeah, I would I would yeah. also add to that that as we study this, I hope we would take a look at what commercial or non-commercial entities are doing in re regards to recycling. Yes. Um, because that's, that's, I would assume that out of the school district, there would be a lot of paper. Yeah, and they don't recycle, right? The RSU doesn't recycle. They, they don't do very well. Um, and it all goes into one place. It all goes into one place. I think that there might be some small programs, but uh, so that might, nothing consistent. That might just all, you know, a, a conversation with the superintendent might be very worthwhile um, just to kind of kick that off, especially on the recycling piece, because I'd rather see that done before it gets into the just the, the landfill. Well, and the educational piece, because if kids see that things are just thrown away mm. everywhere, yeah. then they're going to throw them away at home. Yeah. And we're missing the whole point yeah. of why we recycle. It's not just a monetary thing. Now more than ever. Right. And so when you go do. out somewhere, you have a trash bin and recycle bin almost every mm -hmm. right so you don't want people to just walk by recycling so Eric I have one question sure um, only because Archie's made a note of it I believe which was that they want to bring their recycling on an off day which is on Wednesday yes um, does that affect operations in a negative way or is that all right I don't believe it does I did talk with them at length about it and uh, I made sure that uh, the volume they were bringing was acceptable um, they're talking about it maybe a high side pickup truck not a dump body um, not a compactor truck. Uh, and currently we have, um, on Fridays, we have haulers coming in uh, delivering uh, municipal solid waste in a similar way. Okay. Uh, we've made accommodations in the past, so I don't, I don't believe this would be an obstacle. Um, and I'm actually happy to accommodate it. If, it. if it makes recycling easier for them, it might flow down and make it easier for their customers. 
Perfect. Um, so that's my right. hope anyway. Yeah, and so, I appreciate the comments about the, um, uh, the, the, the billing question because it is going to be sensitive and uh, um, I'm definitely aware that the, that the impacts vary. I mean, summer camps are, are one thing. Um, they have relatively low taxable value. Most of their buildings aren't insulated uh, and they generate massive influxes at one time. So that's one area where I think an assessment would be appropriate. Um, for a two to four yard dumpster, I'm not sure. I don't think it would be necessarily. So we need to look at it, talk about it with the Solid Waste and Recycling yeah. Committee and come up with a threshold and a way to try to find some fairness, but also protect the, 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 the town's interest financially and um, address the equity issue. Right. Well, and I think so getting the data, is, getting the data started in, that, that's, yeah. that's great. Yeah. Um, so is your recommendation approval on these six? It is, absolutely. So Do I will go ahead and make the motion, if you don't mind. So Perfect. I move that we approve uh, the annual permits for Galoosh Waste, J&A Disposal, Simons Trucking, uh, Toronto Waste Services Incorporated, Archie's Inc. pending um, uh, cashing of the check, and James Diamond Sr. I second that. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. I won't reread the motion. I don't think it's necessary. Um, is there some discussion on the motion? I just want to say that I, just for my own sake, and I know that Catherine, you're involved in this a great deal, but it, I think it speaks to the way that we run our outfit, that we have, you know, it, it, it's, it's, I love our transfer station. I think it's a great, great asset to this town. Especially now that we have a paved road. Oh, yeah. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Right on <laughs> Heavens to Betsy. Ain't that the truth? Oh, we're going to love it this spring. <laughs> yeah. Yes, indeed. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of at the winter level now because it always kind of smooth, smooths out in the winter. But yeah, it, that'll be a big difference then. Um, so we have that motion on sitting on the, on the table. And um, any further discussion on it? Seeing none, all in favor. Thank them for their filling out of the applications and providing the additional information that was yeah. requested. Uh, so now we're considering the first draft of the fiscal year 2019 and 2020 uh, budget um, in your packet. And if anybody uh, who's watching uh, looked at uh, the information that you see in the packet, this is a what I kind of call the preliminary 40,000 foot view. Is that correct, Eric? That is correct. So we're just starting to gather information. It's going through the budget process, which is uh, available online with the dates and the meetings and, and so on and so forth. And the budget committee is um, already engaging with this material. Um, so basically tonight, we're just going to have a, an overview and be able to ask some, some basic questions, which might take something back to be looked at a little bit further um so i will go ahead and just turn this over to you eric and if you can just walk us through um the the top lines or or however you want to do it sure um, um, is, like i said it's this is our first brief look at things yeah yeah um well thank you and i like the numbers of the first brief look <laughs> well it, it hopefully it's it, it comes pretty close to what you asked for and uh, I, I think it does um what, what we have um, presented here is a, a flat budget. Um, and it's flat in, in multiple ways, uh, some of which are, are positive, some of which are, are um, <coughs> we know might be problematic. Uh, I'll start with this um, draft uh, mill rate calculation sheet uh, and note that um, the municipal valuation it has been kept so far, uh, and for comparison purposes, the same as last year. Excuse me. Yep. I found it, never mind. Okay. You all set? I found yes. mine too. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry the scan quality sorry, didn't come out great on that. It's but, okay. Um, uh, so the, the municipal valuation uh, line one is the same as last year. That, that is not accurate because we know um, we have at least a, a one, one and a half million dollar increase uh, in valuation and quite likely um, two plus. So we are looking at a, a fairly solid, I think, 1% uh, increase in the mill rate, or in the, uh, excuse me, in the valuation, uh, and perhaps even one and a half, uh, depending. Uh, I'm working with the assessor to get um, a, a more um, definitive estimate 
um, in, in about a month, month and a half, uh, just in time for the, the last push on the budget. Um, that's important because uh, the mill rate being held constant right now, um, with a 1% increase, we would have about $45,000 additional revenue coming mm -hmm. in. Um, and rather than put that towards, say, um, a reduction in the mill rate, um, it very likely could go towards a reduction in the use of undesignated fund balances uh, or be put to some other um, purpose, perhaps offsetting the known and anticipated uh, increase in the school budget. Or a combination. Or a combination. So there's a lot that could be done here, but this was an effort to put together that flat budget. Um, uh, other things that are important to note, um, we, uh, we have a, an overlay, uh, which is $20,000, the same as last year. Uh, and the mill rate uh, is, again, kept flat, 19439, um, uh, so 1944, which is what, the same as what we had last year. Uh, and this kind of covers up a lot of activity uh, in the, the various budget departments. Um, and I can go through those fairly quickly now, unless there's any this, questions on the front page. I do have a question on the front page. Sure. Yep. And it may be a little bit rhetorical. I don't know. <laughs> on the sheet we just went over? Yes. Okay. So I'm looking at line 12. Are we receiving any guidance or thoughts um, <laughs> from Maine Municipal <laughs> Association, who's probably watching this like a hawk, um, or um, our representatives, or anybody else, or just news at large about state municipal revenue sharing? Yeah, um, I've heard only positive things. Um, I've heard only um, uh, statements regarding the fact that uh, restoring revenue sharing is a priority of the new administration uh, and that um, very likely um, it will be included in draft budgets coming forward for the legislature to consider. And would that affect this, this year or is it, a, uh, or is it cycled? to affect following subsequent years? I believe it would affect this year. Um, I don't know how the legislation will be drafted. Um, and um, there's a lot of ambitious projects coming forward with the, um, the new administration and the new um, direction that, that people are taking. So uh, I can't say for sure. I, I think that if, if it was traditionally, the way it's traditionally done is it would affect this year. Well, my public record statement is that I do hope that we do see uh, the state addressing municipal revenue sharing um, to have a trend towards the numbers it has been in the past. Our residents pay that sales tax at entities within the town of Reedfield. They pay it within the service center of Augusta or even Farmington, for example. And so cycling some of that money back into services, and it's a very small amount when you really get right down to the overall sales tax numbers um, is really honoring what the original, um, not, not only revenue sharing, but the original intent of the sales tax was in the states. To remove history. some of that burden, yeah. correct, from the yeah. taxpayers? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Do we Property know? taxpayers. That's, <laughs> that being said, I just hope that we see a change there. Do we know, I know, Eric, you haven't been here since it was much higher, but mm. do we know what it had been? Oh, um, we I don't. Did, we did um, that. Remember. The, we looked in the past, and was um, it approaching two hundred thousand? I think it was in that vicinity. Okay. Yeah, so I, we're down something like forty percent. That sounds about well, right. Right. Yeah. Thinking like two percent instead of the five we're supposed to. Uh, I, I don't know the exact numbers, uh, but it, but it's significantly less. I think that that forty to fifty percent less than what it had been. It sounds about right. Okay. Um, right. And it does vary by municipality and all that. Right. So it's. Um, I understand. There's a very yeah. complicated formula. Of yeah, course. and <laughs> and my assumption is that if seven years ago, for example, if it was one hundred ninety thousand, that's obviously in two thousand and eleven or two thousand twelve dollars. So yeah, there's that factor as well. Mm. I'm not expecting a huge jump in this, but right. I would really like to see a correction in the right direction. I think everybody would, and it's, it's a, a real big hope shared across the municipalities. And I even highlighted it on this page, so if I didn't get to it the previous time, All right, that's I would important. get to it. So, uh, I will, with that question, please proceed. All right. Um, so, I'll, I'll move on and we can start talking a little bit about revenues. Um, so as you can see, um, looking at the very first line, uh, I did mention uh, personal property and real estate taxes staying um, flat, and that's the way they are right now. That will change. 
Um, uh, most of the revenues uh, we, we tried to be very conservative with, and um, we did bump up a little bit in a few areas. Uh, one of the biggest would be motor vehicle uh, taxes, uh, and that's one that um, as the economy has improved, uh, we have seen some sizable increases in, in revenue in that area. I think we still will be, uh, again, conservative on that, uh, even with a $25,000 increase. Um, however, uh, we've been told to be cautious on that number because uh, we are very likely headed for some kind of a slowdown, uh, not a recession perhaps or per se, but uh, uh, definitely s things aren't, um, uh, interest rates may be going up uh, and uh, a lot of instability uh, in the, the world and in our nation, uh, national economy means that we might not see as many people buying cars or leasing. So uh, that has an impact. Uh, fortunately, uh, once someone does purchase a vehicle, uh, they have a schedule and the I say it's depreciation, but it's not. There is a small reduction every year uh, in what revenue comes in uh, for that single vehicle, uh, but it's, it's scheduled and it's slow. So even if we um, you know, have seen the peak, which we, we may or we may not have, uh, even if we have, uh, the drop won't be precipitous because we still have a lot of residual um, coming mm -hmm. from that, uh, those good years. Yeah. Very uh, slow. Very slow. Yeah, anybody that has a, a car that's two or three years old doesn't understand why it doesn't get any cheaper. Yeah. Uh, but it does. It's, that's right. and it's well, just I think a little it all depends on your car easy, because easy. some cars it goes down pretty fast. Th that's true it too. It depends on yeah. where you start. <laughs> true. Um, so that is one of the biggest revenue changes outside of the two at the very bottom which are uh, of the administration line I should say uh, which are the use of designated funds and the use of carry forward. Um, and these are numbers that, that change a lot through the course of the budget as we balance and counterbalance uh, and try to um, uh, keep the mill rate or, um, or meet a certain savings threshold. There's a lot that happens here and a lot of movement that can happen between really three key areas, um, one being the, the tax rate, uh, the second being um, our, um, our reserves, uh, and the third being the capital expenditures that we um, that we have, uh, and so oftentimes uh, money can come from reserves, or it can come from carry forward, or it um, if those aren't available, it would come from taxes. Uh, and we've been working with that a lot uh, to find that balance and keep the mill rate flat, while also maintaining uh, or near flat, while also maintaining a healthy reserve balance, uh, which meets the uh, the two twelfths requirement that we have. Uh, for savings. So a lot going on here um, and a lot of it does depend on what capital projects are going on. For example, we had a $300,000 expenditure last year budgeted for the Moranic Lake Outlet Dam. 177000 of that came from uh, um, a bond that mm -hmm. we had. So the impact of that bond comes up in debt service, <coughs> which was only, um, you know, a couple uh, maybe maybe fifteen thousand mm -hmm. uh, dollars for debt service for that over the the, the ten year term of the bond. Excuse me, um, but uh, we also had money coming from reserves. One hundred and twenty three thousand came from reserves. So when you look at all of that, there can be some big changes in these areas, um, and I just wanted to kind of point that out because it's going to be a, a pattern that you'll see throughout this budget anyway changes in that mix of the use of, of, of contingency, capital spending, debt service, and use of undesignated funds. So, Thank you. Uh, let's see, so um, no major changes in Department 12, which is maintenance. Um, this one really isn't, isn't funded. We don't have any revenues coming from maintenance. Uh, boards and commissions, we have a, looks like a, a heck of a savings. Uh, but again, um, we're not utilizing grant funds uh, and so this major reduction of $30,000 in boards and committees is offset by a, a major reduction in expenditures. So really no, no impact uh, overall on the budget with that reduction. Uh, Department 20, we will skip because there's no activity there. Department 25, community services. We do see a small reduction here. Uh, a lot of that uh, comes down to um, uh, changes in library funding. This may be adjusted. Right now they have said that they probably won't be doing their book sale. 
uh, in any standard form. Uh, they won't be doing the big uh, book sale. So that's going to have an impact on the revenues. Right now they're looking for a home for it and someone to manage it. Um, that may not happen, so I think the right thing is to be conservative and say that's going away. However, I would expect that at some point they'll be able to find some revenue uh, and we can put that in. But we need some more certainty before we can do that. So could I draw your attention to 5010 and mm -hmm. that would be cable TV franchise fees. Yes. So one of the emails that I've kept for probably a year now is some sort of guidance documentation on renegotiating those fees. Yes. And um, what would we need to do to initiate that? Uh, essentially reach out to Spectrum and let them know we're interested. That would be the, the, so are we the like short in an, answer. We're in an evergreen contract. In other words, it just automatically rolls over. It, it's over actually here. expired, but we're operating <laughs> under the old terms. I think it expired. But that's automatic. It's automatic, yes. Right. Um, so the, the, that's the short answer. The long answer is we are a member of a community um, of many municipalities in the state of Maine that do gather cable franchise fees. There's a strong lobby here, uh, and it would be very wise for us to continue to utilize and participate in that process. Uh, there's been legislation put forward in the past, and I think there's going to be more coming forward to protect and help secure uh, these funds for municipalities because there has been a lot of pushback from Spectrum on, uh, on paying these. Uh, and they've been working at the, the, the state and federal level to try to make it harder for us to collect these. So uh, a lot of lobbying going around, and so I, to, the long answer is we really should be working with other municipalities to renegotiate because many are in the same position we are. So, and, and you're saying that that renegotiation, in, in a way, may be addressed holistically by a bill or, or something on, on that level rather than Reed Field just on its own trying to renegotiate. Yeah, absolutely. And we might, I mean, obviously we'll be negotiating on our own in the right. end anyway, but, um, but the we environment... we try to renegotiate channel location too, maybe. <laughs> yeah, uh, absolutely. But the environment for doing that may get better and we want to make sure we can do everything we can to, to create that environment that's positive for us. So the state may create by law an environment which is more friendly for communities to then open their negotiations and talk about that. Absolutely, okay. absolutely. I mean, in the short term, we're okay because people keep subscribing, fees keep going up, um, no harm right now, but mm -hmm. that, that could change um, really any time. Right. Um, so that's a good observation and good thing to talk about. Um, so right now we do see a small increase in that one additional line as well under community services. Um, Moving on to recreation, parks, and activities. Um, uh, can we, oh. sorry, can we back up? Sure. Um, so <clears throat> we had talked at our last meeting about the library. Sonia Horn was here, and we uh, approved. Clark. Sonia Clark, sorry. Yeah, that's okay. Um, we approved bringing in the $25,000 grant money from the Stephen and Tabitha King Foundation, and it looks like that is what is noted here on line 4005 under donations. Uh, yes, yeah, so it should be under year-to-date. Um, it is. Yes. Yep. Okay. Because um, it's really a 19 expenditure, right? It is. They're very much looking to be uh, expending that money this spring. We may have some um, audit work to do if the projects aren't completed, mm -hmm. uh, but we won't be budgeting for expenditure of that mon uh, money in FY20, okay. Okay. as it stands. But this is not in. This is in library operations. This is not in library building. Correct. That's what this line is for. Yes, that that uh, that revenue line. We didn't have a we don't have a, a line set up for that, so it went in under um, donations essentially. Okay, but my, the point I'm getting to is we're not putting it in the library building fund. It's gone into the library operations fund. Is that correct? Well, it's under library donations, uh, which is four zero zero five. So I, I would I would say it's neither operation nor capital. It's just under donations. I'm not sure okay. that's the answer you're looking for. I'm uh, uh, certain it's not, actually. Well, I think, I think you're right, it's <laughs> not. So uh, what I'm getting at is yeah. we were going to schedule a meeting about the library, and I feel very strongly that that money needs a lot of conversation around it going towards library operations and that the building is the responsibility of the town mm -hmm. and that the town ought to be ponying up for whatever the building needs, not 
operational grants that they applied for so and, and you well, made that statement although some remodeling inside for example um, would probably be covered by this yes. twenty five thousand. And we have to be careful because they told the Stephen King Foundation what they're going to use the money for, and that's what they have to use the money. For. Right. Yeah. Right. I think the money at this point is already it's already spoken for. But your point is you want to reiterate. I mean, I believe what I'm hearing because I, I you want to reiterate the fact that the the town needs to pony up for the building. Yes, okay. and they asked for 50000 and got twenty five. So if there are things they need that are, for instance, the heat pump or repairs to the structure itself, I don't think they should have to use grant money for that. Right, no, no, no I agree. And they already yeah. know what this is. They said it's like programming things, right? Well, it's programming and they want to give the library a space or that kind of thing. A facelift, little, yeah. so little to speak, yeah. and, and reorganize and fresh. maybe move some walls. Yeah. And uh, I'm okay yeah. with that. But you know, if we're replacing windows and roofs and siding and heating and, systems. And heat, no. They Not did have a one. heat pump in their list of things they wanted, but. Right. <clears throat> and if that's needed to make a good library. Um, so then I, I guess where I was going with this mm. is, um, have we, we had talked about getting um, some prices on the recommendations that were in the report we received. Are yeah. we working on that so that it can go into this year's budget? Uh, we haven't proceeded with any of the um, RFPs or any of that uh, activity yet. Um, but it's, uh, it's something that needs to happen. Okay, so will it be ha happening during this budget cycle, possibly? Yes. Um, Thank you. It will. <laughs> uh, it might not be a complete definitive... It might not be definitive, but it would certainly give us an idea of where we need to be in what range for borrowing. And actually, we're going to talk about that under debt service um, coming up. Perfect. Um, because we don't know exactly what it's going to cost, and we have other building improvements we need to work on as well. So um, are we good with the library? Yep. yep. I'll okay. just keep being a thorn in your side on that P one. Please though. do. It's the please library's do. turn, I think. It's been decades. Yes. Yeah, it, it is. Um, Definitely is. And the, and the roof is going to be what? How much? Uh, we, d we don't know. Um, many. Many, yes. <laughs> um, tens of thousands, hopefully less than 100. Um, but that's, I would hope so. Yeah. I mean, that's not a, oh, no, we're talking also structure of the roof, too. Oh, the yes. structure of the roof. Oh, so yeah. so right. the, okay. the worst case right. scenario is we take the entire be, roof off yeah. and rebuild it with structural supports that, that are made for holding the building together and supporting the load from above. That's the worst case scenario. Um, the best case is we replace some sheathing, put in some supports, uh, and get out of it for, for, for twenty to $30,000, including the re-shingling. So somewhere- okay, I think that's know. more of a detailed discussion. And yeah, I, I believe it is, yeah. yeah. And so, so are we gonna be scheduling our library meeting still? I, I have that again reiterated here. Yeah. Um, as well. We're, we're so. going to try to do that in the next month. Meet at the so. library. Yeah, remember? do a site visit. Um, right. And a closed we, we'd, night. On a, a night they're not open. On yeah. A closed night. Would you want to do that? I mean, just since we're t discussing it, um, you know, as maybe one of those second meeting of the month type of things where we do a, a site visit. Um, and, uh, yeah, it can be a walking workshop. Walking workshop, something like yep. that. Yes. Yeah. Yep. yep. Um, okay. Uh, we can talk about that when we do the agenda setting. Right. Thank you. Um, we'll put it high on the list. I feel now reminded of it as well. So, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I told people I was going to be a pain, so I'm following through <laughs> on my <laughs> word. Okay, why don't we try to get through the Sorry. rest of the revenues? And thank you. And then All maybe right. we can just get a highlight on the. Some All of the right. Expenses. So uh, no no, t no change on um, uh, rec rec parks and activities. Mm -hmm. uh, protection. We do have a, a small increase here. Uh, based on increase to fees for the member communities of the Lakes Region Mutual Aid contributing to our tower sites. Mm -hmm. um, we just finished that major revision, and if we want to have money in the bank for 15, 20 years down the road when we need to redo it, uh, we need to up the fees a little. Uh, no change for cemeteries. Uh, that one doesn't really have any activity anyway. Uh, roads and drainage. Uh, this is flat as well. We have just the one category of local road assistance. I don't expect that to change much, um, honestly. 
Uh, moving on to capital improvements, again, this is one that's quite variable, but you will see a big change here initially for uh, dropping $177,000 uh, in expenditures for the Marnock Hook Lake, um, Marnock Hook Lake Dam. Marnock Hook Lake. And, and this will change. We will see increases um, uh, and perhaps more bond revenue coming through here, but we haven't completed that discussion yet. Uh, let's see, solid waste, uh, a small reduction here overall, uh, and that's primarily a result of changes to the uh, share uh, that we will be receiving from Fayette and Wayne. Um, overall, the, the solid waste budget is more or less flat. We've seen uh, a small reduction in uh, operating and a small increase in what we would see in capital reserves uh, based on operating needs and capital reserve needs. So uh, it actually worked out quite well this year to keep things fairly flat. Uh, unclassified, uh, a, a change here, uh, because we do expect to be um, expending $10,000 up to out of the enterprise fund, uh, which we have not budgeted for last year, uh, had not last year, because we didn't expect to have uh, any activity. But with the REF getting back on track, uh, we hope to spend some of that money to build small business. Can I ask about First Park, Jim Dinkle and his uh, efforts up there? Uh, this 2019 budget is 10, but 2019 year to date is 15. Is that a good sign? Uh, it is. Um, I haven't had a chance to confirm um, that, that we will be doing better than we have. Uh, okay. I expect it might continue uh, to have a little bit more revenue from them. Uh, maybe it'll even go up a little bit more, but um, until I talk to Jim, it's conservative. We're just going with last year's numbers. Thank you, Thank you sir. Yeah. Uh, because, as you know, it's a, it's a venture that has lost money for years and years, so uh, I don't yeah. want to... Well, they got Jimmy D up there now. He's it says some, this is going up so. 2,000, so it's not last year's numbers. Really? Did From I? 10 to 12. Let me double check this. Who did I went to? Yeah. Okay, yeah, so I think that's why I did. I think I was conservative. I upped it a little bit, but I haven't talked to Jim enough to, to want to go more. Okay. Um, so the year to date was 15. Yes. Yeah. Yes, so, year to so date. So that's pretty, I mean, I'm just saying after the debacle, it seems to be it was 10,000, 11,000, yep. 2018, we don't know, and then 15, which is, I mean, yep. whatever. It'll yeah, never reach good. the overall investment. Uh, certainly yeah. not. Yeah. Certainly not. But it's nice to see somebody... Really working. giving it a good try. Yeah. Oh, yes. gosh, that guy, I get those little updates. And with yeah. a name like Jim Dinkle, he's got <laughs> he's to be doing something up there. <laughs> so we're all set in revenue. We have <laughs> yes. uh, on the last sheet, which is your totals. Yep. And it's showing it down 6% on revenues. But yes. as you explained, there's some <coughs> big pieces that have moved there, like the dam, for example. And Absolutely. And so, um, so on to expenses. Yep. Uh, and I'll start at the back. Uh, we don't need to go to the back page, but you'll also see at the very last right. page of expenses, a 6% reduction in expenses, <laughs> hence the flat oh, mill yes. that we have. Um, but like I said, there are many reasons for that. So um, I will go uh, very quickly through the expenditures and um, just jump in and... Um, let me know if you have any questions. But uh, administration, and, and I'll say throughout. I do have a question up sure. front. Yep. So the, the ones that are in here at this point, some of these are markers and some of these are submitted requests. So this, this, is, a ver this is not a, everyone has asked, got their ask in yet. Right. This is uh, but about 95%. There's very few that haven't, um, oh, really? in large part because I'm responsible for, for a lot of the departments. Right. Uh, and so. You know, I, okay. I've done a, a good uh, good first pass at, at everything. Thank you. Um, yes. And so we do have just a few departments that will be presenting at the next budget meeting that haven't, um, you know, okay. but we have their numbers in most cases. So um, the, the one that um, would be the exception that, that I'm aware of, the only one, would be Parks and Rec. We haven't finalized their numbers yet. Okay. Um, but uh, so overall, uh, as expected, we are seeing increases to uh, wages as a result of negotiated um, uh, increases as well as contract increases. Uh, we are seeing some uh, additional... Which is administration line 10. Administration line 10, yep. Um, and then also some uh, increases in uh, insurance costs, although some of our um, risk, risk associated uh, insurances like workers' comp and um, uh, 
geez, what's the other one? Risk management, um, uh, liability insurance. I've actually seen a little bit of reduction because we've come down in, in our uh, what we're what we're claiming in those areas. Okay. Um, one big one that you want to look at is under assessing. Uh, we had in last year tried to bump that up a little bit to get more hours and more help for the assessor uh, through the code office. That hasn't happened the way I'd like it to, so I'm rolling that back a little bit. Um, we've, in a couple of issues have come up that have really pulled a lot of hours into the code. Um, and the assessing work just hasn't happened the way that I would like it to. So we're rolling that back a little bit. So it's about half what we had budgeted last year. Okay. Um, and that's because the program just wasn't, wasn't performing. Um, overall, we're looking at a, um, a very small increase. I think it's, what is that small number, 0.35. Um, so I think that we're do we've done well. We did, as we do every year, go through and try to pull out uh, as much as we can um, of things that aren't expended, things that uh, are over budgeted, and um, tried to pull things together. So I think we're doing okay there. Uh, moving on to maintenance, we have a 4% increase there. A lot of that is a result of um, uh, increases to building maintenance, uh, which is, is necessary, I believe, uh, and um, some increases in wages. Uh, and again, this is operational type work, not, um, not capital. The one big number here that led to that 5,000 plus increase is drainage work at the fire station. Right now I have a, a, a high end number on that of about $5,000 uh, and so that's why that's showing up in the operations budget uh, and, and not under capital. That was an unusual noise. That, that was. High <laughs> tires. Uh, yeah. Um, all right, so any questions on maintenance? No. <coughs> Moving on to boards and commissions, we see a, a um, $34,000 reduction in uh, uh, Conservation Commission. Again, that balances out fairly well with what we saw on the revenue side. When will uh, the parking actually be expanded there? Uh, I'm hoping that it will be done uh, this spring, uh, if not this summer. But okay. uh, we'll have an RFP going out uh, in February or late January, more likely February, uh, to get that work done in uh, May, June. Thank you. Moving on to Department 20, which would be town buildings. Uh, this one is one that we hadn't, um, we haven't been using because it was brought in under maintenance, so we now have that someplace else. Uh, community services, we have a um, small increase here, dollar-wise and percent-wise, uh, and the big factor there is the library. Uh, and this is one that is gonna take some discussion as well. Uh, they are looking for about a uh, 40 to 50 percent increase in the librarian hours uh, and they're also looking for some um, uh, uh, I think additional work um, and, additional and that increase comes with additional hours available to the public yes yep it does um, and so would that be bringing the librarian to a full-time position uh, that was their original proposal and we said that um, no uh, just on its face, we couldn't bring the librarian up from 20 to 30 hours because it would make full time. Uh, and so Deb Peel's classic response was, well, how about 30, uh, 29 hours, 59 minutes? Uh, which I, yeah, you know, um, I, we did have some discussion at the board level um, uh, with the budget committee and they are looking for more information, more numbers, maybe some more support for the increase. And it's a tricky one because maybe you wanna have uh, documentation or numbers that support an increase. Maybe you just want to have more library hours. Uh, so it's one that needs to be discussed. Um, again, because it does have a sizable impact, particularly with a reduction in revenue on the other side. So um, anyway, that's something that's still still being discussed. But uh, I don't have any issue. Um, it doesn't look too far out of the norm at this point. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Um, don't have any issue supporting it uh, if it's something that the community is May looking for. May I ask for. a real quick question, Eric, in line uh, 60? Yes. The, the street light issue, there was, was talk of purchasing them and turning them into, so, what, what is that, talk to me, help me. Um, it's still a goal. I haven't been able to get back in touch with um, okay. Pete Coughlin, uh, who is my contact for that whole project. Um, no it's one of my, one of my catch up 
priorities after the holidays. Yes, in your so. copious amounts of free time. Yeah, there yeah. have been several more towns who have made announcements that they're changing. And one was that they were changing with CMP, that they were buying them from CMP, but CMP was going to be maintaining them, not a different company. I hope they didn't get overcharged. Yeah, me too. So, um, so there are options out there, but it's, it's a pretty big amount of money, so. Yeah, no, well, I just think it's, hey man. It is, right. and, and the it time's could be right. Yeah. Half of what we're spending there. Amen, Sister Fred. All right. Um, any other uh, questions on uh, community services 25? All right. Cruising along. Uh, we have Department 30, Recreation, Parks, and Activities. This one, we do have a small uh, change in trails because that has been presented. Um, however, like I said, uh, uh, recreation uh, right now, we don't have any numbers. Although I will say they have a very healthy reserve, uh, and we've been talking with them about um, uh, ways to utilize that um, to help you know, bring in more equipment, more programming, uh, things like that. Was that uh, trails, you said? Uh, no, that's uh, recreation. Oh, okay. Uh, we're uh, looking at board, yeah. possibly getting more storage space uh, for them, uh, perhaps adding um, some newer, uh, newer equipment to their inventory. Thank you. Um, moving on to Department 40, Protection, we have uh, a net uh, decrease here. Uh, however, there um, are some things that are a little bit, a little bit hidden, uh, I'll say. Not intentionally, but just by the nature of how accounting works. Uh, we see two big changes here. Uh, $8,000 in uh, Department uh, uh, 40, Division 15, uh, and, and then again in Division uh, 60. Uh, we have both of those zeroed out, uh, $10,000 net migration. The reason those two were zeroed out is because they have traditionally been used for capital expenditures. Uh, they've been used as a savings account, uh, and what that does is uh, a year that they buy $12,000 in gear wrecks the budget, causes a lot of volatility, makes it hard for us to track, and it really doesn't belong in operating because it's a capital expense. So we've moved those uh, into capital okay. expenditures. So that's why you have those two big changes. And that, um, again, um, if not for that, we would actually have about a $7,000 increase. And a fair chunk of that is a result of uh, the proposal to change our radio service communication that Ken Mason came and spoke about. Mm -hmm. so, yes. um, so a few things happening there, but I just wanted to point out those big ones. And uh, so any, that is number 40. Yes. Yes, so that's that, um, that, that big change there for yeah, 2,500 roughly. Okay, thank you. Yep. Um, <coughs> well, excuse me. Yeah, I'm about ready to do you. I think you got me going, <laughs> um, but uh, I'll hold off. Two to go. Yeah. <laughs> Three to go. Uh, yeah. So cemeteries, um, we have a small increase there, um, and they are planning more work in the cemeteries, uh, and I think this is a reasonable uh, increase, uh, and I'm happy to see it happening. They have been doing a great job getting things together. Our new uh, cemetery sexton uh, outlined at the last budget committee meeting uh, how they're going to spend everything except for, um, you know, a thousand dollars or so out of their Who current is the budget. New sexton? Uh, ben Rodriguez, uh, the new hire, the new maintenance uh, person who also does that, that job. Um, he did a great presentation to the budget committee and i um, really happy to see it come out that way. Thank you. Uh, so I think they've got good budget, justifiable increase, uh, and again, another area that we've neglected for quite some time and needs some more attention. Mm -hmm. Roads and drainage, uh, right now we have a staggering 83,000 and change reduction here. That is in very large part because we aren't continuing with gravel road work. Uh, and in the future, I probably won't be budgeting gravel road work out of operations. It's just the way it had been done uh, and it wasn't paving, so we left it there. But it really belongs in capital uh, because again, the volatility is, is huge and it makes it hard to, to see what's going on. But um, we are not doing gravel road and paving comes out of capital. So when we get to capital, you'll see a, a big increase in paving. Okay. That will be more than offset. That will more than offset that reduction. Can I have a motion to extend the meeting by 10 to 15 minutes? I'll make Aye. a motion to extend the meeting by 10 minutes. I second that in motion. All in favor. Okay. Proceed. Capital improvements. 
Um, we'll start right off, and uh, we have a few things that are being planned on. That $10,000 showed up from fire departments. Uh, $3,000 reduction in administration capital because we're halfway through our um, equipment upgrade. We don't need the full 6000 we had last year. Uh, and then the next big one is uh, equipment, um, uh, excuse me, roads, uh, and that's a $100,000 uh, increase over last year. Uh, so 150 total. But that's part of the CIP road plan. It right? is. Okay. Yep. The yep. whole big RSMS. RSMS uh, and okay. our um, long range capital plan based on the actual inventory. Uh, okay. And so I think that that will just about cover South Road, and right now that's what we're planning on doing because it's next in the in the inventory. And um, to answer one of the questions that might come up, uh, is not in terrible shape, but we don't want it to get there. Uh, so part of this is preventative, uh, and yeah. we'll be doing a one-inch overlay on that. What do you so know? On Proactive. On yep. Sorry. Go ahead. So no, going back to 30, yes. which is the library building, so that number 5,000 that's there is probably not accurate. Is, is not accurate, no, and that, that will change. And the same thing with the fire department right now. Um, we, we don't have anything for fire department, or, for, or we do have a line for fire station improvements. However, we haven't funded that yet. Um, so when we do um, uh, figure out where that's going to land, we'll see, I, I'm expecting about a $500,000 increase to capital improvement line between the library and the fire station. Right now, we do have that accounted for under debt service, um, and we'll get to that shortly. Uh, so but again, that increase yeah. would be with a discussion of some bonding and how that bonding would work. Um, and so it's still plain. So just so people don't think there's a $500,000 coming down there. <coughs> yep. right. yeah, Those it, it, are long-term expenses and long-term right, payments. And then the other thing that we try to do in Reedfield is to time our bonds appropriately um, so that we have a, a load of bonds that that we just don't get out of whack with one big bond and then all of a sudden a trough for a long time and then another one that just shocks us. So we Absolutely. have some bonds expiring, I'm assuming. We do. We actually had one bond expire this year. Um, and um, uh, was uh, The net uh, net change was around 130, 135,000 uh, reduction. However, that bond was for road work. Uh, so mm -hmm. we're increasing our, our expenditures by 100,000. So it actually is balancing out fairly well. And there's a little bit of extra room to apply towards other borrowing, like what we're talking about with our facilities bond. Okay. Um, so the other change would be the, the $300,000 reduction that we see right now uh, from Marina Cook Lake Dam. Again, in net, we're, we're down um, 100, almost 200,000, but we're likely going to be right back up close to that number by the time it's all said and done. Uh, solid waste, again, a very small change here. Um, the um, uh, operating budget is fairly stable and is uh, shared by other two, two other towns, so that helps to dampen any impacts that we might see. Education, again, this is one that was kept flat. I have a, a very strong belief that that's going to be increased, um, as it has nearly every year for the past decade plus, um, and as it probably should. Uh, we have bonding coming but, in. And we'll um, note that both 75 and 81 departments are Beyond our control. Yes, but 81 those being county tax. entities are assessing us, and basically what you see in your tax bill, um, we're only the provider of the tax bill. We're we mailing. No it. control. Yeah. There is control. Citizens but it's can not go. Us. Citizens can go to RSU meetings and county meetings and so forth. Yep. Yep. Um, regional organizations, however. Regional organizations, however, are within our, our purview, mm -hmm. and we see a very small reduction there. Um, we expect uh, a small increase for Kabashi. Actually, why is that showing that? Okay, I think we're going to have an increase, but it's less than what we had budgeted last year, so we're actually down um, based on the actuals. Uh, and that, mm -hmm. that is a number that we received from Kabashi, so that's, that's fairly firm. Um, if anything, it might be a little bit less than that. Uh, might go down a little bit more. Uh, KV Cog, we will. That one moved. Where did it that must go? Be it's not there. Huh? 
I'm trying to think. I thought that was still there, but I'm going to have to check on that I would think that, that would be where it would appear. Yeah, um, I'll make a note to check on KV Cog. I'm assuming they're fairly flat, though. Uh, they are actually going down by like twenty dollars. Um, so that's fairly flat. That's fairly fairly yeah. flat. Yeah. Um, uh, Did you say twenty dollars? Yeah, yes. it's like twenty-four bucks. Okay. It, it's, <laughs> yeah. No, on a on a four thousand plus appropriation uh, or bill. Yeah. I got um, that. Okay. So uh, debt service. Uh, this is where we see some changes. Uh, we see the expected variances over time. Uh, we have a couple of bonds that um, the principal um, stays the same and the interest goes down over the time. Uh, over time, so we see a little bit of that happening here. Um, the Marina Cook Lake Outlet Dam. Uh, that's that again. Yeah, I guess I said 13 to 15. It was 13.9. Um, that one came online uh, for us uh, this year. And uh, the big one uh, would be the, that $156,000 road bond that retired. Again, part of that was already offset by the um, Marina Cook Lake Outlet Dam. And what I've added here uh, is a $61,200 payment for a municipal building bond, which is how I've titled it. Right now, that's a 10-year bond at 4% uh, for $500,000. Um, these are round numbers, uh, and you know will will change. I think the four percent might be a little bit conservative. I in the long term, I'd probably bump it up to four and a half. Although, if we go with a longer term borrowing of say 15 years, which I think is more appropriate than a 10 year, uh, then that would reduce that rate. So, after all, four might not be that bad. Um, the five hundred thousand dollar number is based on two things. Um, we had uh, the fire station four years ago, five years ago, um, uh, a version of capital improvement uh, request that went to town meeting had two key components, a new bay and some meeting space uh, and a new bathroom. Uh, all of those things are still very much in the mix and we're looking at those. Uh, I expect that that number of $400,000 um, may go up to say 450. Um, we're going to Re revisit that. I'm working with Lee Mank, Chief Mank, to get the information from the old proposal, uh, and we'll be putting that out to bid uh, to get some, some numbers. It might not be available in time for our uh, budget process to be um, entirely accurate, so we very likely may end up going to town meeting asking for a large number, um, or not a large number, but a, a number that represents a conservative um, uh, estimate of what it might cost for that building work to be done, plus um, fifty to one hundred thousand dollars for the library roof. That one I think we'll be able to have a much better number on by the time we get to the budget um, end of the budget process. So those are two very big uh, items. We're putting them together. Uh, we also likely will be doing work to this building with the parking lot. We have money in reserve for that. We also do have some money uh, in reserve for the fire station building and a very small amount in reserve for the library. So all of those reserves will come in uh, and may help offset some of that um, bond expenditure. Okay. So, you're, so Lee is working with you on getting information for the fire building? Yes. Okay, so we are gonna do the same kind of thing for the library building. Uh, yes, um, it's a little bit different because the, the, we have actually better information for the library than we do for the fire station <laughs> right now. Um, right, because of the report we had. Because done. of the report we had. We will be doing the same um, assessment uh, at the fire station, uh, but it, with the fire station we're doing you know, a, a large expansion and renovation. We'll want to get some engineering advice on it. We'll want to get an estimate of cost, uh, and we'll want to talk to some builders to perhaps get an idea. I don't believe that we'll be able to definitively, we can't just move, I don't think, from the plans we had from five years ago and just plug and play that. I think we're going to have to look at it, revise it a little bit. Um, what was proposed last time around was an expansion off the back of the building. We'll want to have a discussion again as to whether that's still the right direction or whether we want to go off the side of the building uh, with one of the bays and, and try to work it that way. But um, lots of work to do when I'm working with the fire chief. Um, and I think we'll be able to come up with something. If we can't get there, we'll, we'll just pull the plug and wait. 
Um, it's not the end of the world, um, and we might um, find a different way to approach the library structure separately. I think the best thing to do would be to put them together, but that's, that's just my initial take on it. So. Okay. Um, Unless you're done in one minute, we have to extend again. I'll be done in one minute. Uh, unclassified, uh, very small change there. So my question is on 15, the local property tax relief <laughs> fund. Yes. Um, is that just all being carried forward? Yep, um, we will. Um, have we'll, we had applications? We've had just one, okay. uh, surprisingly. So we need to advertise that, because we certainly saw a need, or there seemed to be represented need. There was, yes, um, I mean, need, it's, it's hard to classify. Um, we saw statistically or number wise, um, we've had a few people. Um, make inquiries but okay. uh, really um, I could, our, could our application process be more unified or uniform or do we need to do a stuffer or um, I'll put it this way whenever we have somebody come in asking for general assistance or a poverty abatement I am pushing them towards and through mm -hmm. the state program that this that our program is based on um, mm -hmm. a lot of times um, there, there, there's eligibility issues mm -hmm. there. If they're not eligible for the state program, they're not eligible for our program. So mm -hmm. we might want to look at the criteria, um, okay. but then again, it's, um, so I'm probably used up my minute. I'd like um, to make a motion to extend <laughs> the meeting by five minutes. A second. All in favor. All right. Um, I don't add for discussion on that, because I think we're. You got it, baby. We don't need it. Go ahead. Yeah, all right. Uh, so. Um, the uh, last uh, department that we'll talk about is general assistance, and we have no change there. Again, the net uh, is a reduction of 6% matching uh, what we saw for um, the uh, revenue side. But as I said, there's a, a lot of change here, and even though there's a 6% reduction, uh, it's across the board, so we still have that same impact because most of the revenue that uh, we're seeing change hands uh, is actually <coughs> coming out of things like um, the use of designated and undesignated funds, which all that really does, uh, especially the, um, the, un, uh, the use of designated funds um, and debt service, that doesn't necessarily have an impact on the tax base. Well, I, so I want to thank you for this first presentation and answering some questions. And I think it gave us sort of like uh, um, the roadmap on a large scale. So um, I'm looking forward to hearing more as we get through additional presentations and the budget committee does its work. Any other comments? Um, just on the potential future meetings, can you make sure we add in the library tour to our list? That is great <coughs> here. Thank you. We're next up on uh, the 4th. Correct. February 4th. And we're meeting like every week in February? And are we meeting vacation week for school? You're not, I, we, we're not meeting school vacation week. Yeah. Nobody but that is. was on the, it was on there, right? Um, Let me review that, but I, I mean, it, so, yeah. it, it goes, if you look at what the budget committee, I think we're on there. We're not think, on there until later in February. No, Tuesday we? the 19th, we are scheduled 6.30 to 8.00. That's our regular. That's meeting. the regular meeting, though. So I oh, so I thought you were about the budget. But it's during yeah. school yep. vacation week, is all I'm saying. I see. Yep. And where you have two school teachers, we just need to make sure we'll have a quorum. <laughs> well, let's ask that then. question right now. Yes, are, yeah. are you guys I going to uh, Acapulco or not? No. I will be here. Okay. okay. Available for the people of Reedfield. <laughs> <laughs> As always. Mm -hmm. Ever present, okay. ever ready. Okay. okay. Too. Good. So on the 19th, we would have a quorum. And, and we're meeting the fourth, on the 28th. So the 19th will be a budget presentation? Uh, it will be, a, a, yeah, I think, a second or third draft. Okay. So do we have a meeting the fourth then? Mm-hmm. So those would be the two regular, so regular The fourth and 19th. Yes, the yeah. fourth. Yeah. So fourth, 19th, and then the 28th. We'll take, a look at, we'll take a look at those two agendas, and maybe we can attach the, the work, walking workshop to one of those. Yes. Yeah, um, I we love do it. need to get in the annual meeting of the chairs, and so yes. that'll get attached here. So it's yeah. we talked about maybe starting a half hour earlier yeah. on that night. Yes, yeah. and then the joint committee meeting with the budget. That's to discuss budget. That's not a. It's not a public hearing meeting, correct? It's a working that's meeting. That's right. Yep. Okay. 
Yeah. yeah, the more public things are later down the road. One in March and one in April. Right, but public can okay. attend those yeah. meetings. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Um, another note on the fourth, um, we that's very likely the date we will have uh, poverty abatements. Um, okay. Unless you want to schedule something off sequence, entirely up to you. But uh, I am working to make sure we have, um, I've got one set of documents that I request that I have two more to, to do um, or to get through. So. Um, and that'll probably be a 90 minute and that'll yes. be an executive session because of the poverty. Yep. Okay. So something else to feed into the yeah. discussion. So yeah, looks like we'll be busy in February. Sounds good to me. It's the month of love. Mm -hmm. <laughs> May I take a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded to adjourn. All in favor. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks, Eric. Appreciate All right. It. All right.